What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench and today we're going to talk about something that uh, I haven't talked about in quite a while but it is becoming an issue now that we're doing all of these new builds and it's kind of a fine way, the final way to tune your rifle uh, when you're running an AR platform style rifle and that is your buffer. Now the buffer and the buffer recoil spring uh, combined can fix a lot of issues that you may having. Maybe you have failure to feed, maybe you have short stroking, maybe it's over gas, maybe it's under gas. A lot of those things can be mitigated by adjusting your buffer weight. Very, very easy fix. You can do it by at home. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through the one that we're gonna do today. So we've got our AR-47 that we built. If you watch that video, I'm gonna link it right here. When we shot it, it was noticeably over gassed for me. And because it's over gassed, it means that I was feeling a lot more of that, uh, that blowback, that recoil than normal. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you my process. If it's not your buffer system, if you go through this process and you see uh, that maybe it's not or that it isn't, you can go on to the gas system to where you can buy an adjustable gas block and things of that nature. But the first step that you should always take is check out your buffers. So just a quick down and dirty overview of buffers. So they essentially come in, I guess let's call it six, right? So we have our standard buffer. I'm gonna mark these here so you're playing along. The standard buffer, which weighs about three grams. We have what's called an H1 buffer, a heavy one that weighs in at 3.8, an H2 at 4.6, an H3 at 5.4, and then you have a pistol or a nine millimeter buffer, which typically weighs in around six ounces. And then you have this guy here, which is designed for a rifle length gas system, which weighs in at 6.6 .6 ounces. Most of your build kits will come with a standard buffer at three ounces. Now, while that will work nine times out of 10, when you start to change barrel length, gas system length, so carbine, rifle, pistol, your ammunition load, so a hotter load versus a weaker load, all those things can impact how your buffer system works in your rifle. Now, for those of you following along, the buffer is what basically takes the impact of the bolt carrier group. So when the round fires, the bolt carrier group slams into this buffer. The spring provides the tension this way to slow down that bolt carrier. And, you know, just think of it like brakes on a car. You're braking the bolt carrier, taking all that energy away and it's getting pushed into your buffer system and it slows it down and then it brings it back for a cycle. Your force of this and your spring is slowing down the very, very violent force of your bolt carrier group. So if you have a light spring and a light buffer, it's not going to slow down the bolt and the bolt's going to slam slam very quickly and you're going to feel that slam in your buttstock and you also may find that the bolt is moving too quick for the next round to go in. It becomes a little bit of a game of where you need to play and my suggestion to you is have, when you do a build and you go for a test fire, have three buffers in the different weights. Have one at you know you're gonna have a standard at three. So have something at about four, have one at four and a half and one at five and a half. So you can test each one and see how your rifle performs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the buffer out of here and we're gonna see what it is. So before we get into the fun of the buffer system, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Take a minute, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so you're alerted every time I upload new content. All right, so we've got our buffer out of our AR-47. And what I like to use is I got a little scale here uh, that does in grams, ounces. So let's tear this, okay? And we're gonna weigh the buffer. So it's coming in at 
ounces, which we know a standard kit will come with a standard buffer. Now bear in mind, it's not gonna be exactly three ounces, right? Because they're dealing with weights and companies, you know, this is not a precise measurement, it's a in the ballpark measurement. So this would be considered a standard. Now, it felt over gas to me, which means this was moving a little quickly and I was feeling a lot of recoil in the butt pad. So what we wanna do is we wanna replace, inside this buffer there are weights. And it's a very easy process to get them out. Now it doesn't matter which buffer you use, okay? You can use the buffer that came with it or you can use another one. These are cheap guys. You can get these buffers for you know, eight, nine, ten dollars You can just get the weights. You can get it however you want. So let's open one up. On your buffer, now some of these may be challenging, like this one here. Here's a roll pin, but you see a roll pin doesn't go all the way through. So this one's gonna be very hard to open. We're not even gonna mess with it. So typically what you'll see, let me get something that's, okay. So we have a roll pin here and it goes all the way through. So what we wanna do is we're gonna get our roll pin punch. We're gonna put this on something that we can punch with and we're just gonna hammer out that roll pin like so and then we'll finish it off there we go so our roll pin is out here we go roll pin now you've got this plastic piece on the top which can be easy to come out and can be hard. Just grab yourself a pair of pliers and gently just hold it and twist it and you'll be able to take it out. If it does not come out, my tip to you is get one of these, just hold it here, just warm that up a little bit. Sometimes they use an epoxy to uh, to hold these in and just break that seal and then continue with the process of the wrench. So in here you'll see our buffer weight system is comprised of three weights. Each one of these weights weighs 0.7 ounces each and the body of the buffer with the cap weighs about one ounce. So what you essentially want to do is you want to replace these. Now they come in different weights. They come in steel, tungsten, whatever. So what we want to do to increase the weight is we change the weights out. All right, so we've got them all apart here. There are three weights, a buffer, the buffer plug, the top part of it, and the roll pin. Now what we want to do here is we want to make a configuration that gets us above that 3.1 ounces that we were at. Now, what we're gonna look at first is the actual outside of the buffer. So let's find the one that weighs the most. We've got our, we're actually gonna go with this one here, which is eight ounces as well. So we've got our shell, so to speak. Now let's look at our caps, because you'll see here, all these caps are different plastics. Now the different plastics have different weights. This one here looks like it's our heaviest at two ounces. So we're gonna, we've got our shell and our plug. Our roll pins are negligible. They're gonna be whatever, so that doesn't matter. Now let's look at our weights. So we have these weights. Every weight is gonna have a little pad on it. The pads are all the same. They don't make a difference. So you look at your individual weights. This is what came out of our one that we're using, seven ounce, or 0.7 ounces. Now let's go to, this one is a 0.6, now it changed, it's a 0.6 ounce. Okay, so based on our weights here, we're gonna go with these, with this, and we're gonna go with these thicker pads. So we're gonna set this up like so. One, two, three. Okay. Now you wanna have a little, you always notice that that buffer has that 
kind of movement to it, even though when it's totally closed, you want to make sure you maintain that. Uh, you don't want it not moving. That movement actually has a purpose when the bolt comes back into battery. A little extra jolt at the end will help seat anything that doesn't sit perfectly the first time around. So that is an intended movement. It's not because they were cheap and they just have space in there. Uh, that was a designed on, on purpose. So let's get this. Basically, you put it back together just like you took it apart. That's it. Make sure that your roll pin is flush. Let's go ahead and give this a little weight here. See what we got. 4.3 ounces. So we bumped this up from 3.1 to 4.3. So essentially we went from a standard, we bypassed the H1 at 3.8 and we're sitting around an H2 buffer. So we should see a little bit more slowdown on that bolt with this buffer and this is how you do it guys you just continue to go through the process experiment with the weights uh, honestly having these together for me at all they were all three ounces is irrelevant so what i'm just going to do is just keep these apart and just use them for spare parts and to create buffers when i need them and that's what i suggest you do too keep buffers don't throw them away if you go to a gun show whenever they decide to open back up buy some extra buffers, buy some weights. You can always use them interchangeably to customize how your rifle operates, which is 90% of the issues wow, that you're going to find. So if you have any questions on this, leave them below in the comments. Pretty easy process. Just have a variety of different weights. You can buy the weights just by themselves and it'll allow you to customize your buffer system so that you can get the most out of your rifle or pistol. Until next time, make sure that you're practicing safe weapons handling at all times and treating every weapon as if it was loaded. God bless America. G2 out.